you're being, you're being, you're being programmed. Definition of vow, a solemn promise. Ominous, isn't it? Verb, solemnly promise to do a specified thing, like the agendas. Archaic, dedicate to someone or something, especially a deity. Remember, IE in the middle is interchangeable, the E is always interchangeable, so it's IA, the oldest name for. Janos, the god. The god has so many names, and you'll see him in the in the press lately and on social media saying people, oh Baal is king. But Al is Janos guys. I've been telling you this for years. It's just crazy. So it's all in your face. And this video is about the vow L's. The vow to L. And that's what all that's hand symbolism, face symbolism, all this. It's just them showing their promise to their god, Janos. So hopefully guys, you enjoyed this bite-sized video. And hopefully, it'll give you a talking point. So, they are vow, they are promising. But who to? Who to? Is it the god I talk about with so many names that I've showed you for years? Yes. But it also goes by another name. A E I O U, and some of you out there will recognize yes, that is the vowels. This all stemmed from the great vowel L shift. Great vowel shift, it happened in the 12th to 18th, 19th century, and their god is called A E I O U for a reason <laughs> because that is a name, whether it's a secret name unto them, who knows. I want to show you a little th few things on it then i'm going to show you all the hand symbolism is basically them doing the vowels so correlation between various theories and interpretation of the name of god a e i o u sorry the name of god a e i o u used to signify a monotheistic or ultimate supreme being from which all other divine attributes derive has been a subject of ecumenical discourse between Eastern and Western scholars for over two centuries. In Christian theology, the word must be a personal and a proper name of God, hence it cannot be dismissed as a mere metaphor. On the other hand, the names of God in different tradition and sometimes referred as symbols, the question whether the divine names used by different religions are equivalent has been raised and analysed. So it's just intriguing that when they're talking about the name of God being A.E. I O U, and obviously in uh, Hebrew there is no vowels etc but it's a crazy to think about and that's all I ask one definition of the name of God A E I O U was given by Alicia Mulford as that name which passes into the common forms of thought the author states that in its derivative derivation it may be an ethical significance other writers suggest that the name of god represents the nature of god the attitude as to the transmission of the name in many cultures was surrounded by secrecy the pronunciation of the name of god in judaism has always been guarded with great care it is believed that in ancient times that the sages communicated the, the pronunciation only every 
Once every seven years, this system was challenged by more recent movements to this in Egypt too. The nature of the holy name can be described as either personal or the attributive. In many cultures, it is often difficult to distinguish between the personal and the attributive names of God, the two divisions necessarily shared in, into each other. So it's talking about a secret name of God, which we all knew, could this be that? Or is this the modern twist of the great vow to El shift period when they changed the vows? Who knows? Here's something now from Exodus. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, A-E-I has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, A-E-I, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am, I am to be remembered through all generations. A-E-I? Sounds like the vowels, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> so here's some more. The Torah further describes the role of Aaron, who acted as Moses' mouthpiece and conveyed the name of God distinctly to the Israelites, transcribed as YHYH -H in Biblical Hebrew, conveyed the name of God distinctly as AEIOU to the Israelites, the secret name. The pronunciation of AEIOU is described in Psalms 8 2 by the prophet who wrote, Thou hast made babes, infants at the breast, sound aloud thy prayers. Several thousands of years later, commentaries additionally suggest that the true pronunciation of his name is composed entirely of vowels, such as the Greek, I can't pronounce that, as they allow the creation of the language, thus conveying the absolute infinite potential of God's character. However, this is put into question by the fact that the vowels were only distinguished in a time period by their very absence due to the lack of explicit vowels in the Hebrew script. The, uh, the, the resulting substitute made them semi-vowels and glottals, known as tetragrammaton, is considered the proper name of God in Judaism and is not ordinarily permitted to pronounce it aloud even in prayer. The, the prohibition of the misuse, not use as well, of the name A-E-I-O-U is the primary subject to the first commandment. So you can see why it's intriguing me is the talking of A-E-I-O-U being so, such a secret name it is not able to be said only once every seven years. And we know this realm is spells and this is a powerful name. Remember like when Isis found the, the secret name of Ra and was able to control him. See, once you have the name, you have the power. That's why everything gets labelled. I've been talking to that, talking about that for so many years, guys. So it, it's it's intriguing this because you have the Holy Roman Empire. The monogram basically is A E I O U, and it was said to be a device. Now it's intriguing about the Habsburgs and the Holy Roman Empire that they went from one black eagle. Or, uh, to two double headed eagle from the great vow to L shift. It's like the, the changing of the vows, vow L's, from one god to another. And this is a time period that I've done a few videos on, and it just blows me away. It's one of the biggest finds that I believe I've found that when all this happened, forget people saying there's um, resets every so many years. I'm showing you the reset, the reset when everything changed. All the sciences were brought in that they use today because this realm is full of spells and they want to control it. And this time period is when they did it. And we're showing you in this video, this short bite-sized video, that there could be a name of God called A-E-I-O-U and they're doing secret hand gestures and symbolism right in front of our eyes because they're not allowed to say the name out loud. To me, that's a wow, guys. A few special ladies out there and not so special ladies and not so special men and great guys out there wow 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 <laughs> i had to do it guys because it drives people nuts and i just you know what i mean we have to have a laugh in this reality we have to humor is key so here goes guys this is the aeiou and how they're doing it in secret using the hand gestures and symbolism that we've always seen so letter a a left Turn the A upside down and you'll have a good sense of its original shape and meaning when it was introduced around 1800 BC. 
resembling in an animal's head with antlers or horns. Get the horns. The original meaning to the letter in ancient Semitic was an ox or a bull or like an ibis type of thing. So when they're doing this hand gesture, what you're seeing on the screen now, people think, Paul, that's not the horns. That's not the horns. I believe people have got it mixed round, or they could possibly use both if you really want to. But yes, you're right to question. And yes, it's also the hand sim symbol, hand sign for I love you. But people will say, no, the devil horns is at the side. And as you can see, I've put them both on the screen. But here we go, guys. It is A, a left, Al, left. Like, I love you. The L and the ox, the horns is the A, and the L is the left, which is the, f the thumb sticking out. It makes a, an L shaped. So now you can see how I'm going at it. They're showing you these symbols in plain sight and just maybe i have it wrong which there is all possibility but it makes sense so the letter a the etymology is an ox the horns now remember it's the horns with the thumb out now we'll see many doing it so you can see it and it's under disguise of i love you isn't that handy i love you well they're saying i love you There's, you know but they're saying it to the god on to the letter E now, the E of 3,800 years ago, which is an 11, pronounced he in Semitic, resembled a stick with two arms and a leg, meant to signify a human form. The Greeks flipped it around in 700 BC and changed the sound to eh, eh. Now, as you know, not a video not long ago, I showed you the other etymology of the letter E, where it was a per person standing up, rejoicing like that was saying, and the Greeks flipped it. Now, the hands up, the raised up, is like a praise rejoice symbol but it also represents the letter e so you can see why i'm saying when they have their arms up like that they are doing the letter e so there we go guys so far you've had a and e on to the next so it's eyes time around 1000 bc the letter i was yod the finger or hand of God. The Greeks adopted the letter as I also changed it to a vertical squiggle by 700 BC. So guys, this is self-explanatory. When they're doing this, they are doing the I. So we have A, E, I done so far, guys. Hopefully you can see where I'm coming from. I just believe they're hiding that A, E, I, O, U in plain sight by doing this. So we're up to O, and as you can see, this one's going to be easy. O starts its life on Egypt, Egyptian hieroglyphs around the time of M and N as an I. Semites call it Ayin, but with a guttural sound that sounds like K. Think Hebrew, come in or came. The Phoenicians reduced the I to just the outline of the pupil, our O. So you can see how this one is so easy. The I symbolum eye symbolism that they do in pictures and and putting the 666 okay over their eyes or covering one eye this to me is the easiest of them all they are doing the o so we've done a e i and now u and an o we just u to go so guys what do you think i think i was onto something when i originally did this i believe they're just like i said i keep saying hiding in plain sight and who would know this that they're doing the vowels a name of the god by doing all these hand gestures it's just something to think on isn't it so we're up to you and here we go there's a lot of confusion among the letter u v and w according to rosan the phoenicians began using a letter that looked like a y around 1000 bc they called it war meaning peg the greeks adopted this to be and called it upsilon u which it does look like a Y also. But what got me is how this resembles when they do the horns. Just have a look. If you put the, the, the peg, the peg bottom with the two fingers, that to me is quite identical. So that is why I, I theorise that the horns represents this and not the other way around. <laughs> Obviously, it's just my interpretation. I could be talking bollards, but to get more than one would be not bad tip two to get three i got five five secret society gestures the occult gestures and they are the vowels 
the vows to L, the vow L's. How crazy is that, guys, to get all of them to match, which is hard to do. You would think it was hard to do, but it wasn't. Now, think about it. It's, it's A E I O U, and sometimes Y, I believe. Y. Well, Y back in the day was a U. And if you think about it, how many celebrities you see doing the cupped hands or doing the oh my god with cupped hands over the faces? So, in theory, I could include that as well. But I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to do A E I O and U from the, the original video of the Great Vow to L Shift and just show you guys that maybe with more minds looking at different things we can come to better conclusions i believe this fits more but obviously i'm looking at it from one standpoint so guys thank you for your, your love and your support please like share and subscribe and also I'll, i will leave a link to buy me a coffee in the description your support guys is as ever it just blows my mind and it deserves a one big wow <laughs> right guys Stay safe, always wear a smile, and don't let the past deals grind us down.